Why the heck is this thing orange? Roswell Flight Test Crew here at the Commercial UAV Expo 2021 in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. And we're here with our good friend John McBride over at the Altel booth. How are you doing, John? Great. Great to have you here. It's always great to sit and talk to you about the industry and things that are going on. So great job on Fantastic on what you're doing. So. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Although I'm interested in what you're doing here. More specifically, what you're holding. The Autel Evo 2 enterprise version so a lot of things to offer here as far as the autel evo 2 goes autel evo 2 does come with a lot of cool features that it already does the capable uh, payload swapping and things like that but now we've come up with this new enterprise version that has gotten a little bit you know exciting as far as accessories new developments on the arms adsb we have we have a lot of things to talk about so go ahead and shoot <laughs> well let's talk about these accessories first because I, I think people always love the idea you can take things on the drone put them off you know move them back and forth and change what it can do well the big thing always accessory wise is just instead of having to stick an Amazon flashlight on something, right? Or trying to figure out how to put a beacon on there that you buy separately and just do Velcro. The fact that they're integrated in here is actually a really big bonus. So the accessories themselves kind of kind of go online with our competitor uh, with a speaker, a spotlight, and as well as an LED. But then we have the RTK portion. RTK, understanding a little bit about the RTK, kind of an important thing is that we're not just using it for geolocation of like just good where it's supposed to be flying, but we are actually taking this information and putting it in the metadata of the of the actual ship. So we want to make sure the imagery has this and the RTK is actually being suitable for doing um, that kind of process or if you want to call it that kind of workflow. All right. And then what's the advantage to the end user of having this RTK data with your images? Well, I can go into it all day long, my man. I, I can tell you that right now. I can, I can go into RTK and what that actually means for a lot of people on the end user. The main focus is that a lot of people don't want to do ground control. They don't want to do um, you know, large projects that require them to put out ground control. However, it is part of the process in order to do great capture. The fact that we have RTK happening in real time connected to a VRS or a virtual reference station or an N-TRIP connection, that has to be done real time. And it's a very complicated process. It's not something that's really easy to do with the drone. Um, every pixel means something on where it's located, and that's kind of the, the kicker on the RTK. But most people just want to get away from, and you can't quite do that in, in the drone world yet. We're still, I think that still needs to be refined and, and done well. All right, so John, we've got this wonderful new drone. What are we going to control it with? Well, so the Enterprise offers um, a controller, uh, but specifically the smart controller. So the smart controller has been out for a little while. Um, it, it's nothing new. Working with the new V or with the V1 series, but this is now running under V2 protocol. Basically, new chipsets, 5.8 and 2.4 data transmissions. We have a little bit more extended range with this, so this will be coming with the combo of the Enterprise when we sell it. And 2,000 nit screen, fairly large, you know, so so it definitely gives a lot of presence when it comes down to using this. Not too bad on the weight, so it's not, you know, although we do provide a, a basically a lanyard for you to carry it, because again, flying it for a long duration of time can be a little, little hard on the arms and fatigue. And we do offer that as well with this combo. So besides that, you get a couple batteries and probably the big one is the swappable payloads. So the swappable payloads, being able to take this off simply by removing four screws is kind of a big deal for those that don't want to buy new machines every single time. So <laughs> You don't want to have to buy a whole separate drone just because you want a thermal camera? Correct. Correct. So we have a, a 6K offering, an 8K offering, but to buy the bundles, you're talking about a 640T. That would be a Chinese version of a, of a thermal camera. We have the Boson, which is the dual 640 as well. And then we have the 6K Pro. So this is gonna come in a number of bundles, three of them mainly, and uh, just, yeah, get a hold of your local dealer if you uh, are ready to purchase one. When is this product gonna be available and any idea on pricing yet? 
With the three different combos, you're probably looking at the, the low dollars on the 6K because it's just a standard camera. 640T is gonna come in a little bit more expensive. And then of course the Boson combo is gonna be the most expensive. So, um, I mean, I'm, we're hoping not to push this any more than 10,000 to 12,000, but you, you never know exactly when production availability it's available today, so you can get this, but we're just waiting for production to come through, manufacturing to come through right now. So I know one thing people are really concerned about is the V1 versus the V2 compatibility. If I've got your latest smart controller, but an older drone, or I've got your latest drone and an older controller, how's that gonna all fit together? Well, we don't wanna make it uberly confusing, but simply we had a change in the chipsets that actually created the ability to create a V1 Evo line and a V2 Evo line. The V1 versus the V2 is very important to understand so that if you do have some out there in the field that dealers may still have, you want to ask the question, V2, V1. Um, also, the smart controller is also one with one or the other. You can't, it's not backwards compatible. So we want to make sure in purchase that which one are we buying? The Enterprise though does come V2 protocol. So it's not stamped with V2 like the V2s are, but it's also a question of, if I buy this smart controller, can I use it with my other drones? And that's a no if you have a V1. But if you have the V2, you're good to go to go ahead and use your smart controller and just jump between the two. All right, so important tip there if you already own one or are thinking of buying. Yeah. Well, thanks. Absolutely. And again, we don't want to confuse people, but feel free to reach out and I'll pay attention to your YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because yeah, that, that will be helpful. I just have to ask, why is this thing orange? <laughs> well, it's not about Halloween. <laughs> That's, I'll just tell you that. Um, in the early design, you know, we were talking about a white drone against a white drone and, and the competitor of a, of a DJI against an initial X-Star that was created seven years ago. Um, that was kind of a big deal is to try and kind of offset that we are slightly different. And the slight difference is a color. If you know you got an orange one flying around out there, you're flying an Autel. So there was kind of an idea behind that based around a little bit of a branding. But visually, as you had mentioned earlier, you can definitely see it better. You can see the orange a little bit better, uh, visualize the orientation of it a little bit better. So these are definitely things that kind of come along with the color of orange. But you would never know if it'll stay with orange, you know? Behind us is the Autel Dragonfish, which is all white, it's not orange. Orange, so um, which is a good thing you know so overall more of a branding thing trying to understand the difference between the two so well but I've always found orange I mean I wish all drones were that color why so many companies are, insist on producing a slate gray drone which seems designed to blend into any background I, I've never understood well I don't understand it either hoping to give some insight on that for any manufacturer any insight on color of drones to help with the visual side. And, and we will move to the beyond visual line of sight, which may not matter to us watching it in the air, but it will matter to other people seeing it actually flying around. So that's a really good, really good question that you have. Well, John, always a pleasure to catch up with you. Thanks so much for sharing with us. Absolutely, and always a pleasure to have you stop by. <laughs> always a great guy, great, great information out there. Well, thank you very much, John. All right, and from the Commercial UAV Expo 2021 in Las Vegas, Nevada, this is the Roswell Flight Disc Crew signing off. Thanks again, John. You're welcome. <laughs>